Hello there, my fellow loyal battle brothers, and welcome back to your weekly dose of the Space Marine Chapter's lore. For today, we're also going to be returning to cover another chapter, who are, once again, Scions of Sanguinius. I'm saying that because last week we talked about the Angels Sanguine, who are also Blood Angels' successors. But, the vote was made, and you guys chose with an almost 50% majority this chapter. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the Blood Drinkers. Like we always do when we talk about a new chapter, especially one that requires two or more videos, today we shall cover mostly their history. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The Blood Drinkers is a Loyalist Space Marine chapter and a second founding successor chapter of the Blood Angels. The name Blood Drinkers comes from the chapter's craving for blood, the unfortunate result of a mutated Amophagia gene seed organ. The Blood Drinkers were founded in the time following the Horus Heresy, and they were successors of the second founding, raised in the early 31st millennium. This occurred before the grim truth concerning their primogenitor's flawed gene seed came to full light. Like their fellow successor chapters, the Blood Drinkers are strongly bound to the Blood Angels, united by the blood of the Primarch Sanguinius that flows through all their veins and ancient traditions that outsiders find difficult to understand. Being one of the scions of Sanguinius, their continued loyalty to the memory of the Primarch transcends all other duties and concerns. Being born of the Blood Angel's gene seed, the Blood Drinkers too carry the terrible flaw inherent in their gene stock. But rather than denying their bloodlust, the Blood Drinkers have learned to embrace it, making it a central part of many of their rituals. By doing so, the chapter seems to have achieved an unprecedented level of control over the flaw. It remains to be seen whether or not this is but the first step on a long road to eventual damnation. Despite the unnatural craving for blood that echoes through their souls, the blood drinkers ever aspire to be better than their corrupted flesh, striving endlessly to be judged as equals with other chapters of legend. But a darker secret underpins the seeming control over the flaw. In truth, by the 37th millennium, the blood drinkers were a dying chapter, brothers succumbing to the Black Rage as soon as they were fully initiated. The hero Saint Holos set out upon a journey, disobeying the will of the chapter council to fulfill his quest of finding a cure. Holos experienced a dream, and after being secretly counseled by the reclusiarch Shanadar, set out on a sacred journey to climb Mount Calisium, the mightiest volcanic peak on the chapter's homeworld of San Guisiga. As the brave battle brother climbed the nearly insurmountable peak, he battled Lotan, the lord of the Astorgai, vile creatures that infested the mountain's crags. This foul beast was a greater monster five times the size of his subjects. Four great heroes of the chapter had set out to kill him, and all four had died, their war gear and lives lost in his lair. By the time Holos reached the summit, his power armor had been broken by the violence visited upon him by the Astorgai. So damaged was its machine spirit and actuator systems that it died, and its weight soon became a burden. What armor Holos could free was thrown off. One of his arms hung uselessly at his side, and his weapons were gone. But Holos's will remained. As the Astartes lay close to death upon Mount Calisium's peak, a winged angelic figure appeared to him. It revived him at the point of death and gave him the secret that would enable the blood drinkers to keep the first at bay, if they dared. And Holos did dare. The brother returned solar weeks later to the fortress monastery, long after he had been declared dead. Celebrations at the hero's return turned to uproar when he revealed what he had been told. What the winged figure proposed nearly tore the chapter in two. But those were desperate days, a time when more and more battle brothers were falling into the black rage with each passing year. 
and the first tormented all of them endlessly. Every measure to alleviate it had been attempted, and all of them had failed. These two events are known in the chapter's history as Holos's return and the blood schism. Holos's solution, the right and the way of being he brought back with him from the summit of the volcano, soon worked, putting an end to the demands of the Red First and the madness of the Black Rage. The blood drinkers have since known an equilibrium that other scions of Sanguinius could only pray for. The right of Holos is the blood drinkers' greatest secret and their greatest power. Without it, the chapter would have descended into savagery and been lost. With it, the brothers remained stalwart defenders of the Imperium. There was, however, a terrible cost, which may yet damn the chapter for all eternity. A few of their famous campaigns include A Gathering of Heroes, 266M37 a combined force of blood angels, angels in Carmine, and blood drinkers engaged with traitor forces on the Archaeotech world of Hell's Hollow. Though the cultist hosts were quickly put to death, the attack came too late to prevent their completion of a heretical ritual. The veil was pierced, and the tide of demons spilled through into the planet cities. The blood angels and their brethren reacted to this new development with typical courage and resolve. The main strength of the strike force was deployed in a series of holding actions, stemming the demonic tide long enough for the Death Company to be hurled against the ritual site itself. Among an orgy of violence, the Black Armored Battle Brothers slaughtered everything in their path, closing the rift at the price of their own lives. The Vowsed Perfidy when the insidious Dark Eldar used psychoactive poison to sow anarchy and madness in the populations of the hive world of Vaust, a strike force of the Blood Drinkers chapter vowed to restore order. Though more than 50,000 Imperial citizens were slain in the city fighting that followed, a number of the Dark Eldar leaders were quartered in the heights of a central spire and made to pay for their crimes with their lives. The Cleansing of the Death of Integrity In 887-M39, the Space Hulk Death of Integrity was spotted near the world of Vol Secundus. This accursed thing had been encountered twice before in recent centuries, each time preceding the appearance of Tyranid invaders upon nearby worlds. A general call for immediate Adeptus Astartes assistance was launched with members of the first companies of both the Blood Drinkers and the Nova Marines chapters responding to the call for assistance. Exhibiting a tremendous amount of cooperation, the two chapters deployed almost 200 Space Marine Terminators to the massive Hulk. Over the course of two months, the combined forces thoroughly purged the Space Hulk of a rampant gene stealer infestation. Both chapters suffered losses, as the Xenos were well suited for battle within the cramped confines of the Space Hulk. Though the battle was costly in terms of damage to armor and loss of life, many would say that the ultimate prize was worth it. Hidden deep within the Hulk's ruins was a remarkably well-preserved standard template construct, or STC. The Adeptus Mechanicus gladly accepted this priceless artifact, and went on as far as to repay each chapter with a newly commissioned strike cruiser. The Reign of Blood, 802-M41 The Blood Drinkers chapter assisted the 35th Cadian Shock Troops Regiment of the Imperial Guard in the siege of the demon-infested hive world of Helios Alpha. The Blood Drinkers' powerful assault broke the stalemate, although there was heavy collateral damage suffered by Imperial Guardsmen while fighting alongside the Blood Drinkers. This left the Cadian High Command unwilling to accept aid from this successor chapter of the Blood Angels ever again. The Defense of Castobel The Blood Drinkers came to the Jericho Ridge at the close of 816-M41 mere months before the first tendrils of High Fleet Dagon struck the world of Castobel. Some say that the chapter was drawn to Castobel by the scent of blood, the two companies of battle brothers taking up residence in the highest spire of Hive Ibelus, 
and fortifying it for a protracted siege. It was not long before the Tyranids attacked, and when they did, the blood drinkers were waiting. Alone of all the hives of Castabel, Ibella stood firm against the billion strong horde, the noble, almost beatific battle brothers manning the walls. They set such an example for the hive militia that it is said that men sang with joy as they fought, believing that they could never fall. It was only later that dark rumors began to circulate, despite the best efforts of the militia's commissars and the hive enforcers. Some claimed that the Xeno's infiltrators were stalking the hives by night, but others spun a far more disturbing tale. The rumors told of people dragged screaming from their beds late at night, and of terrible, blood-curdling cries emanating from the spire of the blood drinkers. Still later, it was said that enforcer patrols found exsanguinated corpses deep in the hive sinks, battered and pulped as if thrown from the greatest of heights. None could locate the source of these dark tales, which many rumor mongers claimed was proof in itself that something was wrong. The people of Castabel were fighting for their very existence against the foe, which would have overwhelmed them months ago, if not for the heroic deeds of the blood drinkers. So for now, at least, a few blood-drained corpses easily blamed on alien stalkers were the least of their worries. Unlike the other Blood Angel successor chapters, the blood drinkers are strict followers of the holy writ of the Codex Astartes, and are organized accordingly. From all outward signs, the blood drinkers appear to have overcome the worst aspects of the flaw of Sanguinius. While they still maintain a death company, it also appears that far fewer battle brothers fall to the Black Rage. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Blood Drinkers chapter for today. Since the vote for these fellows was overwhelmingly in their favor, I would assume there are quite a few fans of theirs among those of you watching. So, for them, I would ask, what do you like or dislike most about them? As usual, feel free to share any opinions, thoughts, questions about them in the comments below. Was this video informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future content. Thank you very much for watching to the end, and I wish you all an awesome day. The Emperor Protects.